Hello everyone, I'm on break, and this is Retro Lunch. A new custom firmware was released in the year 2024 for these devices from back in 2018. And much like, much like this three day old pizza, all it needs is a little something to just freshen it up. Later on, a piece of custom firmware from Triforce X was released called Mu CFW. Uh, this was remained on version 1.3 for quite some time, as we see demonstrated here on the Pocket Go V1. This represents a, a really nice looking interface with using a simple menu to go through your systems in, in an easy to navigate way. To get the MiU custom firmware, we're going to start by going to this website on GitHub, which is where the development is happening. If you scroll to the side, or all the way to the bottom in my case, you will see a section called the Releases section, which will point you to the version 2.0 beta. You select that. There we are introducing some of the new features in the 2.0 product, a new TV out feature, which unfortunately I do not have the cabling for. This feature, which is very exciting, which allows me to connect the device directly to the PC via USB. New menu system, safer file system integration. If anybody, if you've used a previous firmware and noticed that it complains whenever you shut the device down because it was not going, it did not go through the appropriate shutdown mechanism, the BitterFS file system should help. A built-in RetroArch, uh, which is exciting for the cores and filters and shaders that it provides. A single download for all images, whereas I believe previously you had to download a separate file for each system. And they have made improvement to their source code. We'll start here by selecting the custom firmware, allowing that to download. Once that's done, I'm going to unzip this tract. Now this has two images. I believe one is more experimental than the other. Uh, we'll probably stay here with the um, UCLIBC image. And since this is an image file, we need to um, send this to an SD card. You may have success with Bolina Etcher or any number of other uh, image burning products. So from here, you want to select the image file, the firmware. And then make sure that you select the correct drive because there may be the opportunity for you to overwrite your system drive on your PC and cause a large issue. We're going to select write. Okay. And from there, I'll bring up the image. The write was successful. Let's close this out. Let's remove the card from the PC and put it into the device. Now let's take a look at custom firmware 2.0. As you can see, the interface by default resembles that of the closer to the original NX Hope, but now has built-in support for RetroArch, which I believe previously had to be added after the original firmware was, was updated. Uh, right now, there are no games added. And let's show the USB mounted support. To get games onto the V90, go to apps, USB mass storage mode, Turn that on, and then plug in the V90 to a computer. Once the device is connected, you will see the 
file system pop up with rootfs, main, and boot. Don't touch boot and rootfs. Take a look at the uh, main menu and go to ROMs. From there, select your system and add your game backups. After the games are loaded onto the B90, feel free to unplug where, and then you can load your games up through your favorite emulator. Click Castlevania. Have fun and happy gaming.